one can be saved without that verb, belief, faith. No one can be saved. So we must let people know that, look, you don't need to do anything. God is not even asking for an offering. So don't say, oh, I cannot go to church and be saved if I don't have offering. God is not asking for that. God is the Almighty. He created everything. If you were hungry, he won't ask you for food. Are we together? God is saying, go, raise the dead to life. How? Tell them salvation is by grace alone, not by anything. Not by the doctrine and the trappings of men in all denominational forms. Never. It's by grace alone. Number two, we need to hit the challenge and therefore come and proclaim to people everywhere as we proclaim to ourselves that salvation is the gift of God in the second place. What is the first thing? Salvation is by grace alone. Number two, salvation is the gift of of God. Praise the Lord. Salvation is the gift of God. It is an offer of a very, very benevolent God. He loves us. He is not against us. All that we had before now, before Christ appears on the scene, is that things we are against us and we are also against things. So it is a, it is a fight. If you like, call it the survival of the fittest and we know that nothing is fittest. Are we together? Because the whole creation is subjected to vanity. And who will save the creation? And how will the creation be saved? It has to do with the offer of a free gift. A person doesn't pay for it. Praise God. What do you do with a gift? What's the best response? Is it not to receive? But how can people receive if we don't offer it to them? How can people receive if when we go out there, all that we do is to offer church and not Jesus? To offer doctrine, not Jesus? To offer what we think the Christian life is all about and not Jesus? I hope some of you are hearing me well. Because some will move from this and, and begin to think, oh, I had a dream. God took me to hell. I don't know what a believer is doing in hell. And I saw somebody wearing mini skirt. And why is the person in hell? Because she wears mini skirt. Is that what your Bible tells you? Or you don't, or you don't think that God knows that people dress? He is the first fashion designer. He designed the dress that Adam and Eve ever wore. Is somebody hearing me? He understands the world of fashion. Yes, the Bible did not say that we should be immodest in our dressing. And yet, it doesn't also say that you can lose your salvation by modest dressing. Is somebody hearing me, please? The Bible never says that we should not use trinkets or jewelry. It never also says that we can lose our salvation because we use gold. This is gold in my, in my finger. Which anytime I see it or somebody sees it, she says, I have a claim over that guy talking. <laughs> is that not the truth? Yeah. That's what it symbolizes. I mean, we cook up a lot of things that God gets surprised. I thought I sent these people to school. God begins to wonder. I thought they can read can't they see? Salvation is a gift. Uh, all that you need to do is to offer this gift to people. Not your church. Not how you think about God. Not how you think about your doctrines. Offer the free gift so that the dead may be, ri may be raised to life again. Praise God. You say, oh, you're a Christian. You went to hell. What took you to hell? Do Christians go to hell? Some of you are not sure. But I've described the, the, the picture to you. Hades or hell is the dwelling place of the departed dead that are not in Christ. And one day, the physical death and hell itself will be consumed by the second death. It's there in the scripture. 
You don't need somebody to relay you by their own fantasy. You don't need any poor person who gets jealous because somebody has money to buy gold for his wife. And therefore bring about a doctrine. Those who wear gold will go to hell. The person is a poor person. You're wondering, just think. The person that is as equally rich as you are will not get jealous because you wear a nice thing. Is that not true? But the person that cannot afford it and the person has greed inside him. Are you hearing me? And the person is covetous on the inside. The person would love to covet and cannot have and then the person begins to have some brain waves and spiritualize things. So, oh, pastor, but the Bible says that for women, uh, the addressings should not be this, but that. Go and interpret it again. Go and see the scripture. God is saying, don't let the outward appearance dominate over the spiritual theme. Let your heart be filled with his grace. Amen. The creator knows what he did when he made women to be beautiful and to be dependent on all of these things. Do you know our father of the faith? His name is? Do you know what he gave to his servant to, in order to go and give to the wife of his son? Hello? Do you know what he gave his servant to give to the wife of his son and to the family? When the entourage of our father of the faith appears, everybody bowed. Are we together? They saw riches and they say, our daughter or our sister, will you go? He said, quickly, and they go. <laughs> look, let's look at scripture. Let me give you one common sense reason from scripture. If we will go by that kind of preaching, God is a sinner, God is a backslider, and God lives in hell. Why? The Bible describes the streets of heaven to be made with pure gold that it reflects like mirror. So it means that the holiest is the wealthiest. I'm not saying that we should be worldly. No, that's not the passage. But don't twist the gospel of salvation and bring other things. It is the offer of a gift. Are we together? A gift that was worked out and then brought to you. A gift that took, took somebody to the cross. Why did he die there? Because you can't die and get up again. You can't just help yourself. Somebody has to bring that help. It takes God's man to die for us humans. And then he comes and says, this is what you are looking for. Have it. It's a gift. So the Bible says, not by works. It's not your effort. And look at what the scripture says. Romans chapter 3 verses 20. Then verses 27 to 28. Romans 3, 20. Then verses 27 and 28. Therefore, no one will be declared righteous in his sight by observing the law, by the works of the law. Rather, through the law, we become conscious of sin. We are then is boasting. It is excluded. On what principle? On that of observing the law? No, but on the principle of faith. For we maintain that a man is justified by faith apart from observing the law. We are saved by faith. We receive this gift by what? By faith. We believe that he died for us. Amen. We believe that he was buried. On the ter third day, he was raised back to life. And he becomes the captain of our salvation today. Hallelujah. Galatians chapter 2 verse 16. Galatians 2 16. Know that a man is not justified by observing, in other words, by working out the details of the law, but by faith in Jesus Christ. So we too have put our faith in Christ Jesus, that we may be justified by faith in Christ, and not by observing the law. Because by observing the law, no one will be justified or made righteous. That was Paul, a Jew, a trained Pharisee, talking. And in his letter to Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 9, 2 Timothy 1, 9, he says about salvation, who saved us and called us to a holy life 
not because of anything we have done, but because of his own purpose and grace. This grace was given us in Christ Jesus before the beginning of time. Wow. Listen, please. Good works did not save you. Are you hearing me? And good and bad works cannot take your salvation away. Hear me? Good works did not do what? Save you. Bad works cannot take your salvation away. Why? You were bad in the first place. Hear me well. If while I was yet a sinner, Christ died for me. It is not having made me righteous, then he would throw me out. Romans chapter 5. You get what I'm saying? Are you hearing what I'm saying, please? If while we were yet sinners, he died. It is not after I responded to the purpose of his death. You know, I was to offer me a free gift of salvation. And then he would look at me and say, oh, Gideon, you did this. I don't like you. And he discards me. It's not possible. He, he, he's not a waster of resources. Pastor Gideon Bagudu will be right back. This program was sponsored by friends and partners of Club 300. Join us today to extend the victory of Christ to the world. You can contact us through any of these channels. God bless you. Welcome back. I hope somebody is getting settled in their salvation. I repeat to you again, good works did not save you, and bad works cannot unsave you. Never. Oh, Pastor, what do you mean by that? Look, works that come after salvation only have to do with your reward. But not anything that has to do with your salvation. You believe once and it is forever settled. Are we together? And the picture is always the picture of Abraham that the Bible tells us. For This same Paul will tell us that God foresaw that the world will be saved by grace through faith. Preach the gospel before Abraham. Are we together? And what will Paul quote in Romans? Abraham believed God and it was recorded unto him as righteousness. He believed God, he lied. He believed God, Ishmael. He believed God, look at other things. Oh, but pastor, if you preach it this way, you make, you, you, you make people to be living their life anyhow. Are you their savior? Who asked you to be the policeman over people? God created people to be free. Are we together? But see, freedom has enormous responsibility. You either use the power of your freedom to move forward in a beautiful life or you regress in a dastard life. Freedom comes with responsibility and God wants people to exercise responsibility. That is what is called maturity. Is somebody hearing me? The other name, the twin name for responsibility is what? Maturity. That you are free to do what is wrong and you refuse to do it because, you know, it will sabotage my progress. It's not that you cannot sin. But you know that there is this thing on the inside of you that tells you that is not your nature. If therefore you apply to it, it will sabotage you. God doesn't put people in chains. By doctrines, we put people in chains. By church beliefs, we can put people in chains, but he offers a free gift that is not by works. Are we together? So if you think that you earn salvation because you are a nice person, in fact, that is the very reason why good people go to hell. They think that they are good. And Jesus finishes it all. No one is good. Only God. Your being good cannot impart salvation. You cannot merit it. So the only thing is for you to accept this gift on its own terms. Amen. And then he goes on to say, no one can boast. Since it is the offer of a gift, you did not work for it. So see, it is not a matter of your own effort. Don't brag. Oh, I remember when someone first got filled with the Holy Spirit in the 1980s. 
And there were some of these people that feel other people are not believers because they pray in tongues. You understand? Even among some of us, some people saw some of us as not serious believers because we are still Baptists. That if you are really filled with the Holy Spirit, if you are really a Christian, you should, somebody quoted for me scripture from Isaiah. God says, come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord. I say, from among whom? So if you don't belong there, you don't have it yet. He said, that's a lie. If you want to boast, there is what the scripture says you should boast about. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 30. Let the person that boasts, boast in the Lord. Are we together? Paul was summarizing Jeremiah 9, 23 and 24. Jeremiah 9, 23 and 24. Paul summarizes it there in 1 Corinthians 1, 31. If you want to boast, boast in the Lord. What? He loves me while I was yet a sinner. He died for me. In fact, he was buried. Nobody can do that for me apart from my Jesus. Boast concerning what he has done. Boast concerning what grace has bestowed upon your life. Boast concerning the resurrection power that is there keeping you alive, keeping you active, and breaking the chains of bondages, and therefore setting you free to achieve everything you need to achieve. Boast in the Lord Jesus Christ. Are we together? Let's brag about him, and let us see if we will not scare the devil to hell. Amen. We boast in him. We proclaim him. We are who we are by his grace. Praise the Lord. So, let us boast in him. Boast. <laughs> Why? He did it all. He deserves our boasting. Amen. I mean, this madness we find around us calling idol. Abby, you understand what they, pick, they call idol? Whether a sports person or an entertainment person or a popular person, so people say, This is my idol. I mean, you need to see some girls many times when they hear maybe the voice of uh, one of their favorite musicians, Hey, she's my idol. I mean, it, it, so my goodness, <laughs> can you do that about Jesus? That's the bottom line I want you to get to. Believe me, if some footballers just pass around the street, people will run out of their houses to just see them. Why? Idols. Nothing wrong. They are champions. They represent the country. You understand? And other things. But what do you do with the Christ of Calvary who worked it out and offers it free for you? He faced Satan for you defeated him, defeated all the powers of hell. One single swoop. And in the picture of Isaiah, he carries on his shoulder the key. And Isaiah says, for the government shall be upon his shoulder. He describes himself in Revelation. I was one who was alive and died, but now I'm alive again. And he says, dead and Hades he has the key are we together he has the key he said I have triumphed over these things that scare human beings he defeated the demon for you he defeated the principality the power the, the source where all jars can be jazzed up he said I dismantled it for you let us brag about him because he's really on the inside of us Praise the Lord. And friends, in the third place, we need to tell people, salvation is the workmanship of God. Salvation is what? The workmanship of God. Salvation is not a product of what people do. What people do is found where people's character are reformed by people. You get it? So a person is an alcoholic, so he goes to where they can help him to deal with his alcoholism. And some never get helped. Are you, are you with me? A person is an overeater, he goes to where overeaters anonymous hold their camps 
to talk with themselves and psychologize themselves and philosophize themselves and persuade themselves why they should not be overeaters. I mean, all forms of things, they are all forms of associations. Falling associations, why they never help anybody. If they have been, lots of the suicides wouldn't have been from products of these groups also. Are we together? What we find in salvation is God in Christ Jesus working things out completely. So we are created in Christ Jesus. And what is this creation? The Bible says, us, it says to us here, verse 10, for we are his workmanship. Everyone that is saved is a piece from a master craftsman. Are we together? Come on, look at your life. Look at the things that God has delivered you from the moment you got born again. All of those things got waved aside so that the best of your life could be harnessed and then you are moving forward because you are harnessing all of these best powers inside you. I read a story about one very terrible guy who's, who got converted. I mean, he was known for being really, really notorious in drinking. The community knew him. He's always a drunk. He got to meet Jesus. He did not only sober up, you know, being sober is the, the language of those who attend those places. When Jesus enters in, he transforms. He breaks the power of the thing inside the person. But then eventually he met this person who was an agnostic. And the person was just speaking carelessly about Christ. See, all of these preachers, they should just keep quiet. The, the man couldn't stomach it. He got up and said, preacher, just wait. Let me respond to this person. You are speaking like this, he said to him, because you don't know about what the Savior does. This community knows me as a drunkard. Everybody, they have their names. You can look at my flesh, you can see different scars. All received. Not because my parents flogged me or whatever, but by drunkenness. But because of this Jesus, go to my house and see today. Jesus has turned my bottles of alcohol to furniture. Jesus has turned my bottle of alcohol to clothes that my wife and children wear. Jesus has turned my bottles of alcohol to a very nice house that all of us long to retire at the end of the day and enjoy ourselves. If this Jesus doesn't save, then no one saved me. He said, I am a piece of a master craftsman. When we allow him on the inside, he changes us. And that's the picture we need to tell people so that they will see the picture and allow us to raise them back to life again. Salvation is the workmanship of God. God comes in and he removes what no psychologist, no philosopher can remove. And he brings out the very best. And apart from that, he brings in the Holy Spirit the one that designed and created the world and says, get back inside there and let this person look like me. We reflect him. That's what happens. But friends, we have to clear ourselves from all of this wrong way of thinking and do the right things. And he prepared us to do good works. Amen. Amen. When we are saved, we now do good works. Now, good works now flows from our salvation. We do not say that salvation flows from our good works. No. But good works flow from where? From our salvation. And God says to us, that is what we are predestined to do. Saved to do good works. Not good works in order to be saved. No. But we are saved to do what? Good works. And what is good works? Acts 10, 38. How God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. How he went about doing good, healing all those that were oppressed by the devil because God was with him. That is doing good. Raising the dead, 
proclaiming that salvation is by grace alone. Salvation is a gift. Salvation is what? The workmanship of God. That is good work. God expects you to be involved in that good work. And shall we pray? Thank you for listening to today's message. Believe you are blessed. If you are not born again, I would like you to pray this prayer of salvation. Lord Jesus, today I surrender my life to you. I receive you to be my personal Savior and my Lord. I confess that you died for me. I confess that I cannot save myself. Therefore, today I put my trust in you. I receive you. I acknowledge you. And I thank you for saving me. Amen. If you have just said that prayer, congratulations. You are born again. For prayer or counseling, call or write. Number 36 Fleming Avenue, Rural Massey. P.O. Box 5570, Transamadi 500003, Port Harcourt, River State, Nigeria. Or telephone plus 234-844-83397 or plus 234-707-119893. Or email info at mybeachytoday.org. For more information on TBCBC, visit www.mybeachytoday.org.